Live from London, England, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 London. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. We're back at the London docks. This is theCUBE. We're here live at Excel London HPE Discover 2016. Uh, my co-host Paul Gillen is back after a nice uh, short break, and Alan Andreoli is here as a Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Data Center Infrastructure Group at HPE. New role for you, congratulations. Great to see you again. Thank you, Dave, great to see you. Yeah, so the, uh, your, your domain is expanding. You're now an expert in networking and storage and, of course, servers, <laughs> and uh, you're number one in, ser in, in servers, and now you need to do that again in networking and storage, right? So no, no problem. <laughs> so. That's the objective. Yeah. And as everything is converging, we are we are we want to continue to be the leader and the south leader in the in the data center overall. So we are we are making great progress. Well, I mean, in servers, you've done very very well. People have been trying to knock you out of that number one spot for a while. Um, you know, there's chatter about units, but when it, when it, the real measurement is revenue. You've been number one at revenue for for a long time. That is the primary KPI, is it not? Hey, listen, I got some good news uh, uh, this morning, actually. We, Gartner just uh, published their results for the, the calendar quarter, and we are uh, distant number one in, in revenue, in compute, and we also continue to be number one in units. So that's, uh, that's great, right? Despite the ramp up of the ODMs with the cloud and so on, we, we continue to be leading the market by a long shot. So that's a very good thing. Uh, although this is not our objective per se of being yeah. number one for the sake of being number one, we are in the business of uh, doing business and uh, be profitable to be able to generate uh, investments so that our customers get you know solutions that match their needs for the for the long term and to invest on innovation. So we we're doing that, but we remain the, the number one on the market, and that's that's good. You said that's a byproduct of your effort with customers. I think it's been for eighty quarters or something like this. Like yeah. right? So that's great. Yeah. That's good. So, um, so talk about the SGI acquisition. Um, relatively so, small acquisition, but strategic for very. HPE. You know, it's it's exactly the continuation of what we've been discussing before, which is our segmentation strategy. So we've been defining the the postures of the market that continue to grow, and we are doubling down. And so we've been growing uh, last quarter forty five percent in HPC. We've been growing 17% on uh, mission critical applications based on x86, driven by SAP HANA. And so now with SGI, we're becoming the expert in these areas. Not only are we the leader in volume and in size, we're also becoming the, the niche expert on the very top specialized high end of the market in supercomputing. Is it a niche or, or do you see a, a broader market opportunity here where enterprises, uh, uh, this technology actually becoming part of mainstream enterprise And a big data play, right? So it's a great question. So it's both. So it used to be a niche and this niche has got to be taken mainstream and that's what we can do as a large scale vendor because you know the Cray and the SDIs were niche players who are playing in a, in a small sandbox and we can play in this sandbox with the scale of all that we all the technologies that we have and expand this commercially. What we couldn't do before, for instance, is to win very, uh, I would say, secret um, uh, federal programs uh, and, 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 and now we can. So we can play in very, very unique and advanced technologies and decide what we want to take to a mass market. In the era of big data, HPC mission critical will become mainstream. In the era of deciding what stays on-prem and what goes off-prem, what will stay on-prem will have to be mission critical and high performance primarily. So we see this very strategically. Yes, it's a small acquisition, Dave, but in reality it will have a big impact on how we become more and more an expert of what is specialized and what is mission critical. And I I was encouraged to hear Meg talk about, I, I forget the exact number, Alain, but she said you, you'll compete now for some number of the top 100 supercomputer you know, performance, so you're competing against China Inc., in my, my view. China Maybe. is trying to become self-sufficient, they've got, I don't know, four out of the top 10. Um, is that important? So let me give two responses. First, made in the USA. Everything SDI done is made in Shipewa Falls, 
Wisconsin, yeah, yeah. USA, and there is a great gang of people there. The metal is made in Wisconsin or in Minnesota. They don't go to China. They made everything locally. So it may, it may sound like interesting, given the times. So this is technology for the country. This is country, uh, technology that is uh, clearly um, differentiating us uh, from the, the rest of the world. Then you look at China. So if you exclude China in the top 500, we have 41% market share in the top 500. If you include China, we are still number one with 140 systems out of 500. So we, had a, we are now the distant number one in this market that we decided to attack, as you remember, strategically three years ago. Then the question is, okay, it looks like there is a big number suddenly and growing number of Chinese supercomputers. First, they are captive. No Western companies right. can access. And second, are these benchmarks to satisfy some political you know, objective of being the world leader of whatever? Right. Or are these real supercomputers doing real world? I don't know because we don't have access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we don't know what they do with them. But we know from the ones we know and we know what they do, we have 41% market share. Mm. And this is much higher than we've ever had. Yeah, and regardless, the strategic implications are, I think, significant. Yeah. Curious about uh, the, the trend toward multi-GPU systems that are suddenly uh, so, so popular in, in uh, scalable and, and, uh, and supercomputing type applications. Is Silicon Graphics a play for you in that area? Are you going yes, to play in that Yes, of course, market? they play with GPUs, and we are expanding our relationship with NVIDIA. And actually, uh, in my segmentation work, I have now expanded HPC to be HPC and AI. And uh, GPUs basically uh, enable machine learning and artificial intelligence. And so we, Bill Manel, whom, whom you may have interviewed in this, uh, in this uh, event, will uh, we'll carry this flag for the company altogether. Is that how you're positioning, uh, how you will position the SGI going into the enterprise? This is essentially machine learning and artificial yes, intelligence yes, uh, yes, machine? Yes, yes. The, 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 so, so if we talk products, the, there are two um, key values for us of the SDI acquisition. Beyond the fact that it's made in America, beyond the fact that they have hundreds of federal certified people and so on, they have two flagship product lines. One is called ICE, which is their uh, fifth generation of uh, supercomputer. And the other one is called UV, which is their first generation of mission critical in-memory systems. These two key products will be taken, will be carried over in our product line moving forward. Mm -hmm. So you remember our uh, when we invented our dry disconnect technology, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. which you know, th this is great, and we've been very successful with it. But SDI has a has a technology which is also very very interesting and very cost effective, and more pervasive in the industry because they are the, their fifth generation. So we blending the two teams together, we keeping engineering, we keeping manufacturing, we keeping the, the development sites and manufacturing together in the USA, and we're going to take them to the next level, enabling them to go to commercial spaces where they didn't have the scale to go before. Will SGI be part of the composable infrastructure? Um, yes, uh, it depends how you, how you call uh, composable infrastructure. SDI is, is actually very specialized, hardcore infrastructure. So composable infrastructure is more how you adapt, um, uh, configure fluid pools of resources to match with your uh, cloud uh, uh, enablement. SDI is more on the specialized side of the, of the business. There are three groups if you want, moving forward of infrastructure. You have the generic infrastructure, the classic x86, which we have had for, for, for 25 years, mm -hmm. the ProLiant and so on. Then you have the specialized, which is doing something, sort of a kind of a very critical mission and unique mission. This is where SGI actually plays. Mm -hmm. And then you have composable, which is fluidity of, and adjustment of pools of resources for the cloud. Okay. So I would say it's slightly different, but SDI will be integrated in the overall uh, continuum of our product offering. Let's talk about storage a little bit. Um, it's part of your, your purview now. And historically, let's say the last 15 years, server-led companies have not been number one in storage. It's been EMC and NetApp. It looks like the market's changing a little bit, but historically, you know, HPE, HP, IBM, Sun, 
going back to digital, have never really been able to crack that number one. Are, are things changing where a server-led company and storage is coming closer to the server and flash is bringing it closer, memory-driven systems are bringing it closer. Is that pendulum finally swinging where a server-dominant company can be a dominant storage player? Dominant, number one. So, <clears throat> the, the, the boundaries between storage and compute are definitely blurring. Mm. So, you have external storage, um, and you have uh, internal storage. Internal storage is exploding. So in our next generation of compute, uh, our Gen 10, uh, the, the space that is dedicated to um, memory or storage options is, is much bigger. Mm -hmm. The number of buses that address memory or storage are, are, are higher. So compute and storage in racks are becoming uh, completely buried. And then external storage continues basically but becomes more and more flash centric. Yep. So we are just passing the 10% flash in data line centers right now. We've been growing 100% year on year with our three par all flash storage. That 10% is a market number, right? Yeah, the market yeah, number. Whereas right? uh, three par is 50%, right? We are growing 100%. But, but the percentage of but the percentage of of three par that's all flash now is 50%, it's correct? It's about that, yeah, okay. right. And Roughly. so we are, we are growing 100% on what is only 10% of the market, right. so you can see how much potential for growth we have. Mm -hmm. And we have been growing uh, very, very strongly with our um, uh, compute-centric storage, internal storage as right. well, which has made us number one when you accumulate the two. Right. Ah, okay. Yeah. When you accumulate in internal storage and external storage. Even with the Dell EMC merger? Yes. You were we, number one. Still. We were before the merger. I don't yeah. know what's the latest yeah, okay. when you add the two of them yeah, together okay. right now. All right. So, so, so it's a very strong growth we have. Our strategy in storage is continue with the growth of uh, three par flash. And this has been, I mean, three par is now really a superb franchise on the market. The gift that keeps on giving, I say. <laughs> and, and you know, we are now offering it a, a, as a flex capacity. I don't know if you had Bill Philby yeah, yeah, coming yeah. here, but you know, three uh, cents a gigabyte uh, yes. per month. I mean, we are right. we are now offering the flexibility of the public cloud completely on-prem with 3 mm -hmm. Flash. So this is this is going very, very well. Then, we are re-attacking the entry storage with a new family of MSA mm -hmm. and a new family of um, of entry storage altogether. So that's, we think, is going to give us a, a, another big boost. And then we're going object storage, which is internal storage, but I move the internal storage offering, which was part of the Apollo line, into the, the storage group. So now we have total storage as one integrated group. And our partnership with Scality yep. is very successful in taking files into object format and therefore expanding capabilities for large-scale, uh, hyperscale archiving and, and, and storage. Which you need to mimic the public cloud on-prem, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we are, we are in a strong position in, 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 in storage and we are, we are a little bit more ambitious. So you know, we have strategies that go beyond organic. We are looking at you know, uh, the next horizon. Uh, so storage is an area where we are very confident we're going to continue to be in a very strong position. Are you suggesting that there's some potential M&A in the future? Or? For the company yes. as a whole? Yes. Well, you, you have to ask Meg, yeah. but you know, we are. You know, wh what we did over the last year and a half has been refocusing the company on the data center and on the edge. And so now we are very, very clear on where we are. From that point, we have generated a lot of cash and Meg has done a phenomenal job in creating a very, very healthy balance sheet, which allows us to be acquisitive if, if we want to. 2.1 so. billion in cash, with 3 billion back to shareholders last year. And she <laughs> said yesterday that uh, by the middle of next year, we probably ha will have 11 to 12 billion dollars in the balance sheet. Yeah, yeah. So which very is, different of what some of other competitors are doing. Which is higher than your long-term debt for the first time in a while. So a we've talked money. about this it's a lot. A lot of money. The, yeah. the, the three-part storage as a, as a service, essentially uh, on-premise storage as a service, is this the beginning of a trend where we see uh, other services, other products out of HPE uh, on the compute side that are offered on a similar basis? I'm sorry, I didn't hear your oh, question uh, very the, well. The new storage as a service, three-par, yes. three cents per gigabyte yes. on-prem. Is this the beginning of a new strategy that we'll see in the compute side as well? Totally, 
Totally, so all of our infrastructure, uh, we want to give customers the best choice, the right mix for their hybrid IT journey. So if they want to go on the public cloud for some um, workloads, we will help them doing that with our Synergy layer. If they want to be on-prem, we will give them the same flexibility and the same cost benefits, which includes flex capacity. So you can either say, anything I buy from you will be at X cents per gigabyte or whatever, or you can say, I'm going to buy half of my capacity, but then I want to be able to have peak demand for 50% additional, and I want to have, you know, and that's what we're going to offer. How are you incenting your sales force to sell this? The, these as a service options are not, it's a, it's a, 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 a change of, of thinking for salespeople to sell that. What, what are you doing in that area? Well, they will be paid, it will be transparent, it will be neutralized for them, and whether they sell uh, as a service or they sell um, uh, with same, same the commission same, same model. I, mean, yeah, I would think you'd make more money over time as a service. It might not would. show up on the income statement as attractive in the near term. But it's not those big lump, lump sum payments. Right, it's not, might not be as attractive near term, but long term I would think it's a very attractive business model. Yeah, and it becomes an annuity business, yeah. right? Which is, which is good for both parties. Yeah, definitely. But, but the choice has got to come from the customer. Do they prefer, I mean, do you want to rent or do you want to buy your house? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's My like choice. CapEx, OPEX, yeah. it's a choice you make with your car. Do you want to lease your car? By right. We will offer all these options and we really want to be the partner, neutral, for our customers to go to this hybrid IT journey. Yeah, and you've got the financial resources to, to deliver that capability. We have HP financial services. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about, we're out of time, but I want to talk about networking, give you an opportunity to talk about sure. that business. Uh, we just had uh, D Dominic Wild on with, with Arista and a customer. It seems like you've got now the 3 com piece, the Aruba piece, and now the partnership with Arista. The portfolio is pretty broad. Talk about your comfort oh, level. We have with, way to go, we have the, way to go. Yeah, okay, so you got, a, you got a very entrenched competitor with two thirds market share. What's the strategy? So, first let's look at uh, the partnership with Arista. Mm -hmm. Cisco um, has lost more than 10 points of market share in the data center over the last few years. Arista, in networking or in, uh, in networking, servers? data center networking. Mm -hmm. During the same time frame, Arista has moved to be 10% of the data center mm -hmm. networking business. So they are the winner. Uh, when you have that scale and they're getting to be around a billion yep. dollar in size, and you are in that type of, of situation, you have different ways to, to scale. You keep investing like crazy in your own, go to market or, and so on, or you make a partnership that allows you to get the reach that you don't have by yourself. And that's why it's a win-win. On our side, we have, uh, we have room to, to get as big in networking as we are in compute or in storage. On their side, they need, they need to scale up. So all of our channels are now going to be activated on Arista, and this is going to be the next jump for Arista. Their strategy of being software defined is exactly ours for storage and for compute, so it exactly matches our strategy. So this is a partnership that is defining for both parties and that will allow us to take our networking presence end-to-end -to -end, together with the rest of our infrastructure to the next level and allow Arista to move to the next 10 points of growth uh, in the data center. Mm. A lot of upside there. A Excellent. lot of upside. Alan, we have to leave it there. Thanks very much. I love having you on. Great guest. Thank and you. Appreciate the overview of your business and the marketplace. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from Excel London, HPE Discover 2016. We'll be right back. <laughs>